China's navy has seen monumental growth over the past 15 years or so, in terms of both quality and quantity. The navy has commissioned a large number of modern and new destroyers, frigates, a swarm of corvettes, and attack submarines, including both conventional diesel-powered submarines and nuclear-powered boats. Also commissioned were several amphibious warships and a small number of aircraft carriers, including the latest Type 003 super carrier, the Fujian. However, what has often gone under the radar or are less discussed are the production facilities and the infrastructure that made China's naval buildup possible. So today we will be taking an in-depth overview of Chinese naval shipyards, at least the major shipyards in which Chinese PLA warships are built. Now, to be clear, China has many, many shipyards that build warships, both big and small, and naval ships of all kinds, both combatants and auxiliary ships. For example, logistics and supply ships, fast combat replenishment ships, and intelligence gathering vessels. However, for our purposes, we will be focusing our attention on the six largest naval shipyards that produce the main frontline combat warships. The six big naval shipyards are centered around two big clusters and two smaller clusters. One of the big clusters is centered around the southern coast of the Bohai Sea to the north, basically the southern edge of the Liaoning Province. The middle of this cluster is the major port city of Dalian. Another key production facility in this grouping is the Bohai Shipyard in the smaller port city of Huludao. The Dalian Shipyard produces mainly surface combatants and aircraft carriers, while the Bohai Shipyard specializes in nuclear-powered submarines including both nuclear attack subs and ballistic missile subs. The second major grouping of naval yards is based on the major coastal city of Shanghai, specifically around the mouth of the Yangtze River that divides China into two halves. The two main production facilities here are the Jiannan shipyard that builds surface combatants and aircraft carriers, and the Hudong Zhonghua shipyard that builds smaller surface combatants and amphibious warfare ships, including helicopter carriers. Further inland and upstream along the Yangtze River, we have the Wuchang shipyard near the city of Wuhan. It is most well known for building China's diesel-electric attack submarines. Along the southern coast in the city of Guangzhou, we have the Huangpu Wenchong shipyard, building mainly surface combatants. All of the major Chinese naval shipyards build both commercial civilian ships and military warships. So they are all dual purpose. Let's start with the Jiannan shipyard, located on the island of Changxingdao, in the estuary of the Yangtze River, within the greater Shanghai metropolitan area. The Jiannan Shipyard is one of China's largest and most important commercial and naval shipbuilding facilities. Jiannan, as a shipbuilding entity, has a long history, stretching all the way back to its founding in 1865. The business has been state-owned ever since its founding. However, the new shipyard was built between 2005 and 2007, to replace the existing shipbuilding facilities that were formerly located in central Shanghai. Operations at the new site commenced in 2008. The western half of the shipyard is the civilian shipbuilding yard, known for building all sorts of large commercial vessels, for both domestic and international customers. On the commercial side, the specialties of the Jiannan shipyard includes LNG carrier vessels, LPG liquefied petroleum gas carriers, ultra-large container ships, large automobile carriers, also known as the Roll Roll Ferries, and ethane carriers. 
The commercial ships ordered from Jinan are typically delivered two years after the initial contract date, reflecting the ability of the shipyard to produce large and complex commercial ships quickly and efficiently. While the scale of the commercial section of the yard has remained relatively unchanged over time. The military part of the shipyard has been gradually expanded since 2008. Unlike the commercial shipyard, which constructs major vessels in the open, the military shipyard has a construction hull where large modules are built indoors. These large subcomponents of a warship are then moved by rail to a large assembly area to be put together into whole warships. In the center of the military yard, there's a large floodable basin for outfitting new warships. The naval shipyard has been expanded since 2017, with the construction of another large fabrication and assembly facility, and the excavation of a new floodable wet basin, in which the current Type 003 carrier resides. So it is clear that the Jinan shipyard expects a sustained high amount of new orders for warships going forward into the near future. In terms of what Jinan actually built, it builds all of China's modern air warfare destroyers, including the Type 055 and the 052D, and the derivative Type 052DL. In the past. It has also built the somewhat less capable 052C destroyer, and in the distant past, the Type 052B. So Jinan is the premier construction facility for China's large surface combatants, including some of the world's most powerful destroyer designs at the moment. And of course, Jinan is also the birthplace of China's Type 003 aircraft carrier, the Fujian. The Fujian, when it finally gets commissioned, will be the most capable aircraft carrier outside of the United States. Finally, as a lesser-known fact, Jinan also built the small landing craft, the Type 726 air cushioned landing craft. Which gets deployed from the Type 075 amphibious warship and the 071 landing platform dock. Next up, let's look at the Hudong Zhonghua Shipyard, located in the center of Shanghai on the Huangpu River. The Hudong Zhonghua is the result of a merger of two smaller shipyards, which are well not incidentally named the Hudong Shipyard and the Zhonghua Shipyard. They are the key builder of large commercial ships for export orders, including to Western and Middle Eastern buyers. These include large container ships, LNG carriers, and oil tankers. A new site for the Hudong Zhonghua Shipyard is currently under construction on Changqingdao, right next to the previously reviewed Jinan Shipyard. Locating two major naval shipyards right next to each other on the same island will have the benefits of concentration, shortened supply chains, and economies of scale to an extent. Militarily, the Hudong Zhonghua is a very important shipyard for China's small to medium surface combatants like frigates and corvettes, and even more crucially, amphibious warfare ships. Hudong Zhonghua claims to be the cradle of Chinese frigates and landing ships, partly for its work in supporting the PLA Navy amphibious forces. It has built all eight of the Type 071 amphibious transport docks operated by the Chinese Navy, plus a single Type 071 ET export version for the Royal Thai Navy. The shipyard has delivered these LPD amphibious warships cheaply and quickly, taking on average around one year between keel laying and launch. And of course, the Hudong Zhonghua also constructed China's Type 075 landing helicopter dock, the country's premier flat-top amphibious warship, 
operating a large number of helicopters for transport, assault, and anti-submarine warfare purposes. Hudong also builds a large number of the Type 054A frigates. These are the workhorse of the Chinese Navy. They are intended for anti-submarine warfare and area air defense up to the medium range. In the distance past, Hudong also built the older frigates' designs, like the Type 054, basically the predecessor to the later and more capable Type 054A, and a long time ago, the Type 053H3 light frigate, which are in the process of being phased out. Hudong has launched O4 of the Type 054AP exports frigates for the Pakistan Navy, also known as the Tugru class. Two of these have been commissioned into the Pakistan Navy. The Type 054AP is basically a beefed up version of the Type 054A, with better anti-ship missiles and radar systems. In January 2023, the Hudong Zhonghua shipyard started construction of the Type 054B frigate, the next generation of the PLA Navy's Blue Water Frigates Force. Let's talk about the Wuchang shipyard, located upstream along the Yangtze River, and deep inside the heart of the country. The Wuchang shipyard is sited close to the city of Wuhan. It was formerly located in Wuhan itself, but was then moved to a much larger site further downstream from the city. The new site is around 10 times the area of the original site. The shipyard is well known for building most of China's modern diesel attack conventional submarines, including those with air independence propulsion systems. Because of its geography, Wuchang is probably the most well-protected out of all the major Chinese naval shipyards. In a wartime situation, the naval shipyards along China's east coast may well come under attack, or at least are vulnerable to potential attacks. Wuchang, by virtue of its location deep inside the country, should be much less exposed to potential attacks and sabotage. It produces both civilian and military vessels. Compared to other major shipyards, the surface vessels built at Wuchang are somewhat smaller in size. It builds many of the medium to large coastal patrol cutters for the Chinese Coast Guard, as well as littoral patrol ships to fulfill export orders for foreign navies. For example, you can see here a large littoral patrol ship for the Royal Malaysian Navy. In terms of the surface vessels for the Chinese PLA Navy itself, Wuchang specializes in minesweepers, which are very important for the littoral combat environment within the First Island Chain, in which naval mine warfare vessels, including mine countermeasure vessels, are very important. The Wuchang shipyard is most well known for building high-quality, conventionally powered attack submarines. These include the Type 039 and the 039G, collectively known to NATO as the Song class. These are fairly basic, yet very modern and quiet diesel boats. And there's also the Type 035 SSK and their upgraded derivatives, known to NATO as the Ming class. These are older diesel submarines. They are designed using the hull of the old Soviet Romeo class as a basic layout, but with much improved weapon systems and sensors. The facilities also build China's most capable conventional submarines, the Type 039A, 039B, and 039C, collectively known to NATO as the Yuan class. These feature an Air Independence Propulsion System, or AIP, which allows a conventional submarine class like the Yuan to stay submerged for far longer than without AIP. The O39B and C also feature a flank array sonar system, and the O39C also has a towed array sonar in addition. 
the presence of AIP in addition to the suite of sonar systems, which are much more suitable in deeper waters, suggests the Yuan class is designed for open ocean blue water deployment more than coastal littoral deployment. The Wuchang shipyard can build its AIP submarines fairly efficiently. According to estimates by Western analysts, the shipyard can produce a single Type 039A or B attack submarine for around $300 million in 2017 dollar terms. In comparison, the build cost of a Japanese Soyuz-class submarine is around $540 million in 2017 price levels. The two classes are probably similar in terms of capabilities at a glance. Evidently, the Wuchang shipyard is more competitive, at least compared to Japanese submarine builders. In the northeast of the country, and at the southern tip of the Liaodong Peninsula, is the port city of Dalian. This is where one of China's biggest military shipyards is located, aptly named the Dalian Shipyard. The city of Dalian has a long and colorful history over the last 200 years, falling at various times under the control of the Russians and later on the Japanese. In the past, the region used to be one of the most industrialized areas in China. Nowadays, with the recent wave of modernization and economic growth, elder regions have caught up with the Liaoning province. But Dalian still leads the rest of the country in shipbuilding in many respects. The shipyard is one of China's crucial commercial shipyard, producing some of the world's largest and most complex LNG carriers. The commercial arm of the Dalian shipyard is being expanded with the construction of a new LNG carrier assembly facility. In terms of military aspects, the Dalian shipyard is of course most well known for building China's first generation Stobar aircraft carriers. Stobar meaning short takeoff, barrier arrested recovery. In 1999, a former PLA naval officer, Xu Zhenping, purchased the half-built Soviet aircraft carrier, the Vayak, from the newly independent country of Ukraine. The Dalian shipyard was assigned the challenging job of rebuilding the carrier to the PLA Navy's requirements. The project engineers employed by the Dalian shipyard spent the next couple of years studying the carrier's blueprints and finalizing the plan for completing the ship. Chinese naval engineers got busy with repairing the wear and tear on the ship over the years. Steam turbines and other heavy equipment were installed, and the superstructure was outfitted with a new radar mast. Finally, the ship began her maiden sea trials on the 10th of August 2011, and in September 2012, the Vayag was officially renamed the Liaoning and she was commissioned into the PLA Navy. In 2014, the Dalian shipyard began to manufacture China's second aircraft carrier, the Shandong, a modified and slightly improved version of the Liaoning. Assembly of the ship inside the dry dock began in 2013, and the ship was structurally complete by the end of 2016. Shandong was commissioned into the PLA Navy in 2019. The build process for the Shandong was very smooth and moved at a fast pace, showing that the Dalian shipyard had learned extensive lessons from building the Liaoning. The construction of the Type 003 carrier in the Jainan shipyard further down south, and the earlier production of the Stobar carriers by the Dalian shipyard show that China has the capacity to build at least two carriers at the same time if it wants to. Whether it will do so is an open question. The Dalian shipyard also builds the large surface combatants, including the Type 055 and the 052D, modern air warfare destroyers. And previously, it had built the Type 051C air warfare destroyers, armed with the S-300 air defense system. Not only does Dalian build large surface combatants, 
It also builds them very fast and can build many at the same time. For example, in late 2022, the Dalian shipyard began to build five Type 052D destroyers simultaneously. Two of these ships have been launched, with three still under construction. A short distance away, but staying within the Liaoning province, is the Bohai shipyard in the port city of Huluda. Bohai shipyards builds all of China's nuclear-powered submarines. It builds them in three main assembly halls, one located in the west and two on the eastern side. Next to the assembly halls are the production halls for fabricating the individual submarine sections to be transported to the assembly halls for final assembly into submarines. Completed submarines are moved into a nearby dry dock via traversal rails. Once they are ready, they are launched from the dry dock into the sea. The Bohai shipyard has been expanded between 2019 and 2021. Originally, there was only the old submarine assembly hull in the west. The expansion to the shipyard added two new large assembly hulls to the east. Estimates by credible PLA Navy watchers suggest the three total submarine assembly hulls have the maximum capacity to assemble 20 SSNs at the same time if required. In early 2023, Bohai has started construction of a new submarine harbour to the south of the facilities to provide additional parking spaces for outfitting new submarines. This is further evidence that nuclear submarine production will soon pick up. The Bohai shipyard produced all of China's active Type 093 attack submarines, which include several derivatives. They are the Type 093A that are far quieter than the original 093. Most recently, Bohai launched the Type 093B guided missile submarine with a large number of vertical launch cells to fire anti-ship cruise missiles. China's next generation Type 095 attack submarine is also believed to be under construction by Bohai. And of course, the shipyard has built all of China's undersea nuclear deterrents, the ballistic missile submarines starting with the original Type 092 class and carrying on to the current Type 094 SSBN. At least six Type 094 and 094A, the upgraded version, are believed to be in service, and possibly more. Like elder Chinese naval shipyards, the Bohai shipyard also builds commercial ships. Their most notable product for the export market is their multi-purpose bulk carriers, which are vessels with large capacity for high-volume commodities, such as grain, metal ore, and coal. In the south of the country, in the major city of Guangzhou, within the economically largest province of Guangdong, is the Huangpu Wenchong shipyard. From a commercial perspective, the Huangpu Wenchong is a major production facility for all sorts of engineering ships, including offshore engineering ships critical for building and maintaining offshore energy platforms, dredging vessels, semi-submersible heavy lift ships, and container feeders. In the past, in the 1970s and early 1980s, the Huangpu Wenchong shipyard built China's first generation attack submarines, the Type 033. These were modified variants of the Soviet's Romeo class submarines. Nowadays, the Huangpu Wenchong builds mostly smaller surface combatants, including frigates and corvettes. It builds the Type 054A multi purpose frigate, and previously the Type 053H3. Furthermore, it is a prolific builder of the Type 056A corvette. China has built a vast swarm of these small warships for anti submarine purposes. They are designed to secure the waters within the first island chain and keep out hostile submarines. Consistent with a focus on small ships, 
the Huangpu Wenchong also produced the Type 037 series of patrol ships, which includes missile attack boats and anti-submarine ships. As an aside, the Guangzhou Shipyard International, which is located very close to the Huangpu Wenchong, builds the majority of the Chinese Navy's fleet replenishment ships, including the Type 901 fast combat support ship. These are critical for providing Chinese warships blue water capabilities. Chinese naval shipyards are a key factor facilitating the country's naval modernization. They are what allowed the country to build the world's second most powerful navy in a short amount of time, basically in the span of two decades. The Chinese naval buildup has been assisted by China's huge commercial shipbuilding capacity, which can be easily transferred to building military warships. While China has a large number of shipyards that can build warships, the types of warships they build are incredibly diverse. No single shipyard in China can build every single warship type required by the PLA Navy. Therefore, to build China's growing navy requires all these different shipyards working together to deliver a wide range of quality naval vessels. In some respects, this relationship is quite similar to a naval fleet, where different units must work together to reach full combat's potential. That will be all. See you next time.